siding torn off of this house. Tonight we're getting our first look at the damage left behind from Hurricane Dorian. You can see damaged homes and torrential downpours across the Bahamas. The monster storm made landfall there this afternoon as a record breaking category five hurricane. This new video gives a closer look at the damage inside another building. You see ripped installation and torn debris just scattered everywhere there. A former aide to the Bahamian Prime Minister tweeted this video from the Abaco Islands. This storm is nothing to play around with as it churns closer and closer to Florida. Governor Brian Kemp just announced a mandatory evacuation for all six Georgia counties right along the coast. By the way, he's going to be heading to Savannah and Brunswick tomorrow to meet with emergency management officials. Brian Kemp is also holding an afternoon news conference at 430. So tonight a state of emergency has been declared for four states, including Georgia. Portions of Florida, North and South Carolina are bracing for potential impacts from Hurricane Dorian. We have live team coverage from 11 Alive's Ryan Kruger and Hope Ford on how Georgians are getting ready for the storm. Well, let's start first with Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb. He has the very latest on the track of this powerful hurricane. Chris. Yeah, just a couple of minutes ago, we got a brand new advisory in from the National Hurricane Center. You can see where that storm is in relation to us here in Atlanta. I want to get down close to it because it is making yet another landfall right now at Grand Bahama Island. Earlier, it made landfall at the Abaco Islands and it moved over water, now making another landfall. Now, maximum sustained winds have come down just slightly from 185 miles an hour to 180. That is still a monster storm. The newest track right here shows a category five, 180 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 220 miles an hour, moving very slowly to the west at six miles an hour. It will maintain category five status tonight and then by tomorrow coming down to a category four, we then think it will start taking that turn during the day of late Monday and into Tuesday, continuing to move up as a category four uh, on a Tuesday off the coast of Florida, but still bringing in hurricane force winds and strong and heavy rain there along the Florida coastline. And then a category three on Wednesday off the Georgia coast. Once we get into Thursday night, a category two as it's nearing the North Carolina coastline. It looks like during the day on Tuesday into Wednesday, that's when the Georgia coast is going to be feeling most of the impacts of this with rain and also some very strong winds. Even though it's not making a direct landfall from what we can tell so far, there will still be many impacts felt on this system along the coastline. Stay with us. We'll let you know how this track will impact us here in the metro Atlanta area. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. By the way, Hurricane Dorian is expected to bring dangerous levels of flooding all along the Georgia coastline. That's our where our Ryan Kruger talked to homeowners on St. Simons Island who are preparing for the worst there. Emergency crews are already warning homeowners on St. Simons Island that the bridge to and from the island may flood and people won't be able to get on or off right after Dorian hits. The picture perfect views of St. Simons Island. They create breathtaking vacations, but Alex Binkley is hoping this won't turn into a nightmare. I said I wouldn't stay again, but now I'm changing my mind. Sunday was her 70th birthday, and she's lived her entire life in this house overlooking the water. She's been through a number of storms. Irma was the scariest. Check out this cell phone video she took during that storm. She lost her deck, but that's it. Thank goodness that's all we lost. <laughs> you know, we could have lost much more. Nothing can be built any taller than the trees. Her husband Ron showed us how close the water came to the house. It came up 18 inches right here in the entire yard. Some neighbors have already started preparing for Dorian. Workers put up plywood over the windows at the Lighthouse Museum on the island. And while the thousands of vacationers are soaking up the last few rays of sunshine, many of them will be gone by the time Dorian's impacts are felt here. But Ron and Alex will stay like they always do. Whatever happens, happens. It's God's will. And emergency officials are telling us we could start seeing impacts here on St. Simons as early as Tuesday. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. A former EMT and also Metro Atlanta caterer plans to lend a helping hand to potential hurricane survivors. He fed thousands of people after Hurricane Michael slammed into Florida last year. As Hope Ford explains, he's ready to do it again. This is the face of a man watching a hurricane closely. That's massive. It's also the face of a man preparing for the aftermath. There's this period of time where people that have no infrastructure, no power, no nothing, that are going to be hungry. And we try to comfort them just a little bit with a good hot meal during that period of time. Dan Francis is stocking up on pasta and lots of it. 
It doesn't require refrigeration. It holds temperature for a very long time and allows us to make it, pack it, and transport it over hours without filing any food safety guidelines. Francis plans to take the staple food into storm-ravaged areas, depending on where Dorian makes landfall. We're hoping to be able to deliver 10,000 meals a day. So what we do is we cook the food in other places, and then we pack it into this box. This could be the second time the cook and former EMT heads into an area devastated by a hurricane. Last year, Francis traveled across parts of Florida destroyed by Hurricane Michael. We're thinking we fed about 13 to 15,000 people in five days. Businesses, churches, and even survivors of Hurricane Michael donated money, supplies, and food. It never failed that many more volunteers than necessary would immediately come to help me. His first mission presented challenges like long drive times around tree-covered roads and washed-out bridges and lack of electricity. Francis learned and is over-preparing this time. Francis may feed survivors with hot food after a massive storm, but it's those very people who, in return, feed his soul. It's a spiritual thing. They'll feed us with gratitude and they'll feed us with courage and strength in the face of devastation. Ultimately, Francis hopes he never has to leave Georgia. He prays the damage from Dorian will be minimal. Still, he and a few others from his business team are ready to fundraise, move and cook should they need to. All right, thanks a lot, Hope. And folks, if you know of any evacuees out there looking for a place to stay, Atlanta Motor Speedway is once again letting people camp there for free. The Speedway tells 11 Alive they have more than 30 campers out there tonight. AMS has done this for years during hurricane season. And nearly 50 dogs and cats from Florida are safe and sound tonight at the Atlanta Humane Society. Crews brought the animals in from the shelters. Stay with 11 Alive for complete up-to-date coverage on Hurricane Dorian. Our Ryan Kruger and Chrissy Etheridge will have updates from Coastal Georgia. Look for them on Facebook and Twitter. And plus, don't miss our weather special tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Stay in the know with real-time alerts sent directly to your phone. Just download the 11 Alive app.